Hello everyone, my name is Pleasant Moon and welcome back to another video. Today I have a build to present to you that I've been working on among other projects for the past month and I'm excited to show it. I would like to add a huge thank you to Nvidia for sending me a 3080 graphics card to try out and use with this build as it has actually been an absolute blast to make. Cyberpunk 2077 was on my game to play agenda during December where I thoroughly enjoyed it. So when I had the opportunity to dive into Minecraft RTX once again, I was immediately inspired to loosely create a building from the game itself, in which case is the Arasaka Industrial Complex. Now I was not prepared to make a whole city, so I did have to find my own way to chop the building out and place it in my own environment, where I found a small vanilla snow island and did alter it to fit. A quick disclaimer that this build was made in Java and ported over to Bedrock for the RTX Touch, as I do enjoy using World Edit for efficient creation. Now there is documents on how to convert your worlds to RTX from Java, and I will leave a link in the description below if you guys want to check that out and port your worlds over to Bedrock if you have an RTX card to use. Anyway, with all that said and done, I'm going to let a time lapse do the talking first, and we'll do the walking after. Enjoy.
And that's the time lapse done. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I had so much fun building it. Regardless, let's take a closer walk through, shall we? Also, um, <coughs> do you like my chicken villager skin? I'm quite entertained by the skins in Bedrock Minecraft. Not gonna lie. Look at this thing. Look at the eyeballs. It, 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 it's weird, but the, the, I kind of like it. Not gonna lie. I'm tiny, by the way. Look at this. I'm so small. I'm so tiny. I'm not, I'm not even two blocks tall. I'm tiny. It's great. Anyway, <laughs> let's go do, let's go do a little walkthrough. What are we going? What are we at? Let's go. I will also say that the Cyberpunk 2077 game itself is for mature audiences, so I do not recommend it to the younger demographic. However, the Cyberpunk theme itself is absolutely gorgeous in RTX and I wanted to build it. So anyway, <laughs> let's start with the main building, shall we? The original goal of this project was to just make the building itself, but I later realized that my mind could not just leave it at that. It had to be dressed up and I had to somehow find out how to do that. In Cyberpunk itself, it has this very strict walled off area. So I decided that would probably be a good cutoff point. I attempted to loosely replicate the features of the building in Minecraft as they were in the game itself. The details and proportions aren't exact to the letter, but very loosely replicating this building meant I could add my own little quirks into it. For example, the lighting around this portion here, I had decided to add later on to make that shape really pop. The ray trace light flows out from this original point and almost outlines these huge vents on the facade of the building. Not only that, but it just gives a bit of extra depth. During building, I did find that detail was slightly lacking when it came to translating this into Minecraft. So I added small things like the light and stair detail to bring it together more. I'm actually going to turn this to nighttime real quick, like complete nighttime. At the moment, we do have this on sunset, but this orange glow, it does actually, it does actually reflect off the building itself. As you can see, the black stone has a bit of more of a polished look in RTX, which you also can change in the resource pack but i am going to quickly turn this to nighttime so you guys can get that full effect of the glow it might be a bit dark for some people with a uh, darker or low resolution monitors but look at the lighting in this it is absolutely just bouncing off everything and i, I love these little tunnels with the light that just sticks out underneath if you go further away from it, you can tell all that light just flows out from those solid points and slowly disappears back down. I absolutely love that about nighttime. I was able to make certain blocks glow by altering their mer file within the texture folder. I'll pop this up on screen for you all to see just in case anyone might be interested in changing this themselves. Nvidia provide resource packs on their website with RTX enabled that you can put into your worlds. I was able to download what I wanted, zipped it into an MC pack file, and double clicked to import it into Minecraft automatically. From there, I simply attached the resource pack to the converted world and loaded in RTX. Upon loading, I was able to edit the texture files directly. Navigate to your com.moyang directory and click on your Minecraft Worlds folder. I will leave the steps to get to that in the description below for you guys that might not know how to get to that. From there, find your latest loaded world if you haven't loaded any more since, as that will be your RTX world. Hop into Resource Packs, Pack, Textures, and then Blocks. Choose what block you'd like to make glow and open the mer.tga file into Photoshop or an image editor that has the ability to edit channels. Within Photoshop specifically, you'll find there to be different color channels. In this case, RGB, red, green, and blue. These layers will affect different RTX PBR mapping, including metallic, emissive, roughness, and height map values. Because we're altering the emissive nature of a block, we want to specifically click on the green channel. Pressing Ctrl and L with this selected will bring up the levels of the block. Adjusting the output level value at the bottom controls how bright the block will be. For my case, I chose around 32 for most of my blocks in this pack, 
Because it didn't really seem to blind too much, at least. We want to turn it up to max. Give it a go, but it, it might be as bright as the sun. <laughs> After altering, press save, reload the world and the blocks have become emissive and glow. You do not need to close the game for this as long as you're editing the texture pack within the world that you're playing on. This is how I got the smooth quartz block for the Arasaka branding to glow in RTX on compared to off. And it has a kicker of an effect at nighttime. Night is when things truly stick out and look brilliant, showcasing all the light bouncing off of various surfaces. If we move into the garden around the back, we have various light sources bouncing off each other. In this zone, I didn't really have a block that could accurately depict the style of lanterns in the game. So I compromised with some regular Minecraft lanterns on top of some fences on the ground. So we've got a few on here, and then we've also got a few over here that kind of just flat out sit on the ground. It, it seemed to work at the time, <laughs> for the reference anyway. Personally, if I wasn't loosely replicating this building, I would have added more plants. The grass does make it feel a bit flat, but that is also part of the building style in the game itself. It's rather refined and well maintained. Given I went a little bit cheeky and added a few extra tall grass in there. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Unless the light color is hard coded like N-Rods and redstone torches, the color of the light also changes depending on the color of the block. For example, these sea lanterns in the small river have a blue light tinge to them as per the texture itself. I took the liberty to create some cute cyberpunk holographic glowy textures myself. These signs are added to the gateways for an extra pop of color to an otherwise dark place. Maybe we won't get anyone wandering in with some big red warning signs basically telling them not to go any further. <laughs> You can alter textures in a similar way to the MERF files by just grabbing the PNGs directly from the textures folder and making whatever texture you like. Not all blocks can be transparent though. Blocks like trapdoors, regular doors, the vine and the ladder are all transparent and can be changed as such. However, you can't make any full blocks transparent aside from the glass block. But glass cannot be emissive, so it doesn't really work if you want to make things glow. <laughs> Glass is reflective though. Hmm. That's basically how I created this build in a nutshell. I created a small walkthrough reference video of me taking a gander at the build, which I slowly poured through trying to get some fun reference details in. When it came to the outside, I did have to wing it a bit. Details like the broken road, the tunnel, and any parts that stick off the road are pieces I added myself to blend it with the surroundings more. For example, this little bit over here. In in game, this does go across the road and into a bit of a different part of the industrial complex with a whole bunch of um, tanks and whatnot. Who knows what they're storing in there? But of course, I wasn't going to build that segment, so I did add this kind of extra parts of the walkway just so it didn't randomly stop. You know, <laughs> I made it keep going a little bit, and I think it kind of carries on quite nicely. I will turn this daytime real quick so you guys can maybe see a little bit more of the details I've added. There we go. Look at this. There we go. So you can see this part a little bit more clearly now. It comes out, extends and hops into the water and is nice and stable there. I feel like it kind of works well. And this tunnel as well, I it was a bit of a last minute addition, but I felt like, you know, how is there roads, but no way to get here. So I did have to find some way for, you know, drivers to actually get here some way. <laughs> for workers to get to work and I made this tiny little van I it, it, look it's not great okay cars are not my forte I barely do them at all but I just made this tiny little van and then when at night time you can see the light shine through the trap doors as well which I think is really cool and this glass look at it it's all shiny it's all shiny it looks pretty it looks pretty and these blocks at the front are like the uh, the headlights I couldn't really make them any smaller so I went with that <laughs> anyway, I did that, and you also might have noticed at the very start that this was glowing at night time. It's like one of those little holographic maps that you find around Cyberpunk. The, the quick TP stuff. Anyway. <laughs> the two towers off to the side here, I had grabbed inspiration from some Arasaka towers nearby in the game that weren't directly connected to the main complex itself. They were very clearly Arasaka branded though, so they went with it quite well, I reckon. 
It just needed a bit of extra industrial existence outside of the wall. And of course the terrain was pretty basic as vanilla terrain. So I did add my own little hills with, you know, voxel sniper and world edit, added a bit of shaping and there we go, voila. <laughs> also did some custom trees too, just to give it a bit of a sense of place in the land instead of just kind of plonked on there, you know. I wanted it to go in, I wanted it to match in and I feel like it worked out pretty well in the end, if I say so myself. <laughs> And that's it. I had a lot of fun making this build. And once again, I'd like to send a huge thank you to NVIDIA and their ANZ branch for sending me a 3080 graphics card for this. It's a gorgeous card and honestly seems to handle pretty much anything I throw at it. Absolutely stunning. I love it so much. <laughs> RTX Minecraft is also now out of beta and in the full release. So if you have an RTX graphics card, I highly recommend checking out RTX for yourself. It's available on the Bedrock Windows 10 version of Minecraft in the base download. So you don't have to opt into the beta now to access it, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Chicken. <laughs> Chicken. Bye. <laughs>